What's up, Catfish World? How y'all doing? Hope everybody's doing good today. Uh, Dieter Melhorn here, out on Lake Wiley. Dragging some bottom rigs, Santee rigs. Looking for the ever-elusive catfish. Hope everybody's doing good. Beautiful Monday, isn't it Monday? Yeah, I think it is. Anyway, apologize for the wind. That is one thing that is out of my control today. So, anyway, hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I've been out here, so I get this in holder, for a little while today. Uh, I, I may spin around here actually where I can see my rods. Stay there. Stay there. Don't move. Don't move. Live television at its best. All right, anyway. A few people tuning in. Uh, I am dragging for catfish on Lake Wiley. Got some shad for bait. Hopefully, y'all can hear me because it's windy. Uh, this is the, I guess, stuff that's pushing in off the Atlantic coast. So, anyway. Uh, that's what I got going on. Any luck, Tom asked. Uh, it's been really, really bad so far. Three fish and their channel cats. Well, one blue, one small blue. What we got, if you notice from the title on this video, brown water. Man asked himself, what's brown water, Dieter Melhorn? Brown water sounds like some of that bourbon we drink over here in Kentucky. Meanwhile, a man from Tennessee would say, that's whiskey we're drinking. No, this has nothing to do with alcoholic beverages. This is all about, it's not poop water either. That's the other thing. We're not talking poop water. We are not fishing the poop pipe. I'll tell you what the poop pipe is in a minute. Somebody remind me. Anyway, brown water. What happens is about this time of the year, usually it's a couple weeks later in September, we start getting brown water. The lake gets patches of really, really brown. I'm going to show you what the lake normally looks like. This is the way it looks. It's supposed to look I call it the Lake Wiley green. It's kind of greenish, clearish. That's the way the lake's supposed to look. Down the lake a few miles where I'd planned to fish, it was brown. It's got a brownish tinge to it. It looks like iced tea. It looks like pure leaf iced tea, except nowhere near as tasty. Anyway, uh, it happens about this time every year. Usually it's Usually it's a little later, a couple weeks, about September, so uh, mid-September, but we're starting to get it now. There's some patches of it, so uh, I'm not sure the scientific explanation, people will call it turnover, but technically we don't have a turnover in these reservoirs, uh, but we do have the plankton, you know, that we've seen in some other videos and all that other stuff that creates uh, an abundance of death in the bottom part of the water column. And I think that abundance of death and decaying biomass and hot water and all that kind of crap is what leads to brown water. So, anyway, it usually equals a bad, bad bite, too. And uh, I got the, uh, I was on watery yesterday fishing. And I noticed it, but watery is kind of hard to tell because it always looks like a swamp or a river anyway. So, uh, I got up here and sure enough, right around the South Point boat ramp where I put in brown water. So... I had to make a move for my, I had to deviate from my plan, so uh, I ran up a river arm. We have the South Fork River here for people that know it. Fished up in there, water looked a little closer to normal. Uh, was this actually most of it's being imported off this side of the river? And uh, the bite's pretty slow, so I've made a run up the river. I kept running, 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 got away from brown water and got back to normal water. And uh, I just put the baits in the water and started coming to you guys live. So. That's kind of the story. Uh, water's around 85 degrees. Lake's been stable for a long time. And uh, thanks, Northwoods Angling. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for the uh, little thing. I finally set that up the other day. I appreciate you throwing out the, uh, uh, what do they call that? The Patreon thing or whatever it is. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, are you going live tonight, by the way? I was curious uh, if you're going live. Northwoods Angling, by the way, folks, be sure to check him out on YouTube. Uh, Got a great show. I think it's the best edited stuff in fishing. The stuff he cuts together is freaking awesome. And uh, does a bunch of a super chat donation. That's what it's called. I finally turned on that super chat thing that I had forgot about. So anyway, thank you a bunch for that. Um, 
But yeah, check out his show. Uh, he's on Facebook, Northwoods Angling, and also on YouTube. So you kind of see him both places. He does a lot of live stuff. Uh, he's been a real inspiration for us idiots who go live because some of his live stuff is like super long. He did like some super long shows and uh, kind of motivated me to do one that was uh, not as long as his, but pretty long. So yeah, Northwoods Angling does some cool stuff. He's got a sturgeon show and they fi he fishes for some different stuff. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's really cool. And uh, one day he's going to have a uh, new $85,000 line that uh, Pure Leaf, Lipton Pure Leaf, is going to buy for him. And as I say that, I catch a fish. So bear with me. Flip this around here. There we go. I see a rod moving. How about that, Luke? You brought me some good luck. Oh, he came off. Oh, oh, oh. Came off. Let me check the bait on this thing. Feels like he snatched the bait. I'm fishing with all gizzard, Chad. Just so you know, uh, I caught a bunch yesterday on Lake Watery. And ah, I'm in a planter board. Now I've got a mess. Bear with me, folks. I'm going to have to untangle this stuff. I'm back. Where was I? Did not hook up. Might have been too big a bait. I kind of went all in here. Uh, I've got a bunch of big baits out. Dragging some gizzard chat. I say big baits. They're fairly big baits. Uh, I just figured I'm going to be on. I'm going to be out here for a little bit uh, because it's uh, probably another hour. So I'm not staying past dark tonight because guess what? It's Monday night. What happens on Monday night? The whole catfish world should be aware. Raise your hands. Raise your hands if you know. Student, someone in the back. Someone in the back. Student in the back. That guy. Catfish Weekly. Catfish Weekly on YouTube tonight, 8 o'clock. I think he did a show today. Um, there's a guy, and hopefully he's on tonight. I didn't get to watch it. I was heading out the door. But uh, Luke from Northwood Ang uh, Angling knows him. Uh, so Luke, chime in and tell everybody over in the chat side who he is. But he's a fisherman that is down in Texas where they're really horrendous rains are taking place and thoughts and prayers to all the people out there especially if I, I know I've got some uh, folks down there that watch from out there watching the ride go off but um, I know we got some folks that watch that so, man thoughts and prayers to all you guys you really getting your butts kicked down there and uh, a lot of prayers for you people but yeah um, Luke just chimed in he's a guide down there and uh, has been going around rescuing people getting them out of their houses there's just not enough you know, professional rescuers to take care of all the people and he actually had a live stream camera going on his boat as he had a whole boat full of people rescue him so boo thumbs up to you dude that's awesome man that uh that's that is distracted sorry that's really cool getting out and doing that they uh the folks down there in texas it's just it's unreal i looked at some stuff finally today and it is amazing i was down there last year on a shoot in dallas and there's a just real funny bridge, a real pretty bridge. Uh, and I remember shooting there and there's like this little wadi that comes through there. There's not hardly any water in it. I said, man, I wonder what it's like when it floods here because that can be bad. And I seen a picture of it today and I remember standing at that thing shooting how far it was down and it's filled up with water. It's crazy. I mean, just a just a huge, huge mess. But yeah, uh, I know uh, Catfish Weekly did something with him today, I think in the middle of the day. So anyway, tonight Catfish Weekly comes on every Monday night at eight o'clock Eastern. And uh, you guys need to make sure you're subscribed to that so you can watch it. Make sure your notifications are turned on. So uh, hang on, I'm gonna check something here. I got a planer board twisted. That one's still taking line. That one's taking line out. This is the planer board that is a miss. All right. All right, we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to do live repairs here on camera. This is. Uh, see what I got going here. I got a planer board that basically got twisted. 
These are pointer boards right there. This is the special Dieter Melhorn fishing planer board. <laughs> Sorry, let me get this tilted this way. Uh, available only to me, at least right now. I'm thinking about selling these things. Uh, but that's what I've got out here. I've got two planer boards out, and the other two are just straight out the back. But if you guys haven't used planer boards fishing for catfish, they're a great way to get a good line spread, get your line spread out further and cover a bigger area when you're dragging for catfish. Pardon me, I'll get back and focus and talk to you. Let me just get this one back out and going. Show you what we're using. Hey, it's a good angle to do this. Piece of gizzard shad head. We got some of the rattles on here. Boop, boop. It's on a Santee rig. I got a little drift weight up here. There we go. What I'll do is cast it out. Don't have to cast it out far, just far enough to get it, let it hit bottom. Watch that. If it's on bottom. What you do is you clip the planer board on. And you can do this backwards, trust me. You'll know it when you do it. Put it through this little pigtail thing on the back. That attaches it to the line so when it pops free, it won't come off the line. It's still on there. Then you clip this to the end of the line that is closest to the rod. So, I know a bunch of you people are laughing at me that use these things and know how to do this. But I guarantee you, there are a ton of people out there who have never used them. So, that's why I go through all this. Especially all you walleye fishermen and all that. You can do this stuff blindfolded. So, anyway, hopefully the connection stayed on there. And then what I do, you can see it kind of swimming out right now. It's going to just float back. Line's going to go out. And then poof, it will be out there beside the boat. You can see one over here. It's out beside the boat on that side. That big blue thing right there is a drift sock. It's a 10-foot easterling tied to a rope. Comes to the back of the boat. That's to slow my boat down because it was really windy a few minutes ago it's kind of died down but uh, i try to keep my boat at about a 0.5 drift speed when i'm drifting dragging whatever you guys want to call it so that's kind of the that's kind of the uh little rundown on everything right there but anyway for anybody who's just joined in i'm dragging for catfish on lake wiley got gizzard shad for bait i've only put three in the boat just had one hook up a minute ago well almost took up it didn't stay hooked up i'm getting a lot of short strikes today actually i may have one on top of the water back there um let's see what happens with that one but dragging using gizzard shad trying to keep the boat to around 0.5 we got a good north wind which is blowing downstream which makes dragging on this lake very convenient and uh the title of this thing was brown water and uh for those of you that missed it, you can replay it, but basically what brown water is, and we start getting brown water in this lake, and this happens in some other ways of ours. Um, it's from, people call it a turnover, but we don't technically have a turnover in these lakes, but it does have something to do with the decaying biomass and plankton and stuff and all in the bottom of the lake. And it's just, for whatever reason, it will brown up the water. Uh, this water here is really for us this is kind of a greenish kind of color to it which is normal that's what it should look like. uh, this other stuff is brown it looks like iced tea and uh, it's just kind of a ratty looking color to it so I got out of it typically it's not good fishing in those areas so I just got out of it and uh, decided to come over here uh, yesterday on Lake Watery I uh, tried going live had all kinds of things go wrong cameras dying our phone dying and uh, just a multitude of things. I think uh, what happened, oh, it got locked sideways, so you were looking at me like this the whole time, and I couldn't tell it because it looked fine to me. So that's what was going on there. So anyway, I ended up with 20, 20 fish even yesterday. Uh, I had an 18 and a 14 were the big fish. Most of them were small, eater size blues. So it was, uh, it was a good day. It was a good day fishing. I was doing the same thing, dragging baits and uh, sitting here looking at what the boat's doing. You can tell 
Lines are going that way, boat's kind of cockeyed. That typically means they've got a water release going on, which they may have turned on some water, but if so, I can't tell it. So anyway, more of the drama for my world. But yeah, yesterday was, as far as Dieter Melhorn fishing on YouTube, it was just a comedy of errors. Uh, just everything went wrong. I caught a, one of the big fish that I actually caught. It was going to be live and the camera died. And as I say this, I'm plugging everything in to make sure nothing dies here today. But yeah, one of my big fish that I was going to catch on camera, the, the camera phone died. And it was just, it was not pleasant yesterday. So anyway, back out here today. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to fish probably another 45 minutes or so. And uh, then I'm going to head in, head in a little bit early and uh, go check out uh, Catfish Weekly tonight. They're on live at 8 o'clock here on YouTube. So yeah, definitely make sure you guys subscribe to that and turn your notifications on. Notifications for you that don't know is that little bell-shaped thing. And if you hit it, it'll give you some options on your notifications. You can be emailed, it can alert you and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's kind of what that is. I didn't know what it was either. Somebody, my 10-year-old told me about it. So. If you have any questions about anything technical like that on you just find a teenager and they'll explain it to you so they all know how to get around on it so that's what's going on here but yeah uh big shout out thoughts and prayers to all the folks out there in texas man they are you guys are suffering out there that's a uh it's a tough tough deal that storm came to a stop and uh it's just dumping rain. I mean, just pounding you guys. So, and there's a lot of anglers out there. Uh, and I've got some that uh, watch here on this channel. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys uh, make it through that. Hopefully you're in some higher ground. It's just, uh, it's a mess. We're supposed to get rain, I think, starting tonight. Uh, nothing like that. It's not associated with that storm, but it's with the tropical depression that's off the coast of North Carolina. Uh, on the Atlantic coast and I think they got uh, it's been pounding the coast for a few days uh, matter of fact I think there are a couple of missing uh, fishermen down there that went out in the boat somebody just told me about uh, out of somewhere around Oak Island I think uh, their vessel's been missing and uh, had a buddy that was down there yesterday I was talking to that said he was out at the inlet and he said there were solid five footers out there yesterday and uh, so yeah definitely not conditions to be out in a small craft in so we're going to be getting rain. Uh, I'm not sure how much, if it's going to be bad enough to change our lake levels. Our lakes have been very stable for a long time now. Uh, and that's been pretty good for fishing. Uh, typically, I think I've got a fish on this one rod. Let me go check this. I think there's a fish on there. Let me around. There we go. Stay right there. Stay right there. There's a fish. What happened was I looked up and the line's out almost straight on top of the water. A lot of times these blues, when they get hooked, will come to the top of the water. Don't know why they do it. Some do, some don't. That's what happened with this one. It's a small one. No need to tell the wife to shut up. It's a small one. It's up there. And as predicted, it's a blue catfish. Easy, easy. I do not need any more fins in me. There it is. Big monster. See how big it is? Oh my god. Oh, it's so huge. Oh, it's huge. Split even today, sadly. That is only fish number four. Two a piece, though. Yesterday, out of 20, we had 11 come on rattles. The other day, on my 22 fish day, I had 12. So, bear with me. I'm gonna get this rod back in the water.
All right, guys, we're going big bait. I say big bait, it's fairly big. Nice big chunklet on there. Cut open and split, so all the juices. Mmm, that's good TV. Right there. Always make sure you don't have a scale on the tip of that hook. So you get a scale on the tip of that hook, it'll make you cry. All right, let me get this in the water. Gosh, now wasn't that exciting television? Wasn't that exciting? Huh? That was worth uh that was worth tuning in for right there. Yeah, yeah. No, seriously, that's fishing guys. Uh it's not always Tons of big fish and lots of fish. So that's the way it goes. I say that as I'm staring at a rod that looks like it's swimming off out to the side. So bear with me. <sighs> Somebody's asking, Casey's asking, did I ever get the 12 volt big cat hooks? He's talking about the ones from Gamagatsu. I have not got them. Uh, I'm not very hopeful that I am. Uh, these are the ones he's talking about. Uh, not very hopeful I am, and I'm okay with that. I got some other hooks I'm going to be trying out here soon, and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, how it goes. Hey, Lyle, how are you doing, buddy? Lyle Stokes just jumped in. Everybody, Lyle is, uh, or uh, yeah, I am in Lyle's spot fishing out here, and uh, Lyle's a great guy who I was going to try to fish with next month, and I'm not going to be able to, so I'm kind of heartbroken. I may have a fish on. I got a planter board board pulled straight back. Bear with. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Doesn't feel like a fish on it. But something's funky with it. Not sure what's going on with this line. It's just kind of going. It's not where it should be. Twenty pound line, actually thirty pound line. A bunch of things have thirty pound on them now. I went up to thirty pound mono to uh, I actually think everything looks fine. I went up to thirty pound mono planer boards just to have something heavier for it to bite onto. So that one back out into the water. See with the planers, it's pretty easy. If I can do it, anybody can. Pigtail it on there. That's probably the biggest challenge, just figuring out how to do that pigtail. And I always clip it on the end of the line closest to the rod. Now what I'll do is I will let that I'll let that line go out, I'll let that plunder board go out away from the boat for a little bit. I'll run over here and click it in gear. It'll bite in and it'll start swimming out away from the boat. So what it does just give you a wider coverage area. That's all it's doing. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. But yeah, anyway, uh, what I was saying was, let me get around the tip of the rod. Bear with me, let me fix something. All right, back set. Kabam. Hey, listen, thanks everybody for tuning in. I got a good crowd of people coming in here. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys. Anytime you stop by and take a few minutes to come in here and watch the lunacy that goes on, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't get to say that enough. I may have a fish going off. Stand by. Real, real, no. Doesn't feel like it. Doesn't feel like it. A little too soon. I'm going to check the bait on it though. If I get popped by Channel Cat on these soft baits, it'll be gone. Still there. 
like a boss. All right, let me get back in here. Anyway, yeah, thanks for everybody tuning in. I always, uh, just always want to thank you for that. I'll show you my setup here in a second. Um, I got these new monster rod holders from Steve Douglas. Monster rod holders. That's why they're called that, because that's the name of it. There is a, if you go to my webpage, DieterMelhornFishing.com, I've got links to the website there in case you need to. Interested in looking at the ones they got. Uh, but Steve put something up online. He had these red, white, and blue rod holders. He had some with green. He had about four or five different colors up. And he said, hey, who likes these rod holders? <laughs> and I said, dude, I want the red, white, and blue. So anyway, they look really cool. I've been uh, wanting to reconfigure the way my rod holder situation was on here. And uh, I got that done by with, with these rod holders. So it worked out perfect. Uh, I, I'm not a rod rack guy. I'm not a guy that... Fish is a rod rack. Some guys do. I I just personally don't like it. It's nothing uh, against it. It's just uh, it's just my style of fishing. It works better with the way I've got it set up. I do so much. I'm such as I tell people. I'm such a bad fisherman. I get so many fish going into wrapped up in the motor that I need to get to them to get them untangled. So that's why I do it. But uh, <laughs> no, seriously, um, just the way I fish, the hatches that I've got, my live well in the back. It's better for me to have access to it. So that's the way I've got the setup I've got. Love the setup I've got. It works great. And these new rod holders really help, especially using these planer boards, because the rod holders, he says they're two position, but you can actually get about three positions out of it. Maybe four, but definitely, definitely three. So they're very versatile, and I like them. I'm just, I'm a big fan of them. I had some early on, and just, they're good for what I do. But I reconfigured it for what I'm, doing here and it makes the ease of operation a little bit better being right where it's at so anyway lyle who's on the show tonight tell everybody who's going to be on the show at eight o'clock in case you tuned in late i've told you already but about an hour and 15 minutes uh catfish weekly will be on here on youtube so make sure you tune in this is part of the monday night this is monday night slime as we call it this is the uh this is the uh light fight before the real show comes on so hang on let me fix these lines here let me just get them uh knock them in gear hang on matter of fact i'll show you what i'm doing how about that i'll show you the setup that one's been running out way too long so i've already been in gear that's in gear okay so yeah what i've got is this one goes straight out the back it's on the bottom with the santee drift rig this one right here you can see is at a steeper angle let me get down here that rod's a lot steeper that one goes to that planer board. That's that yellow board right there. And then this one shoots straight out the back and it's going out. So you can see I've got a spread. This is about a seven foot uh, rod, a seven foot big cat fever rod. Seven foot six, I'm sorry. So it's about seven feet out. You got this one and you got that out. So same thing on this side. It's just a good wide spread of rods. That's why I do what I do when, uh, with my setup. It's just, uh, and with the setup, with the rod holders I've got, I can actually put, um, put that back in. I can put two more planer boards out, one more on each side. So with the rod holders next to the motor, in theory, I could drag with eight rods. Um, so it's pretty cool. It's a lot of coverage. Actually, one, two, six. Yeah, I could drag with eight. So that's pretty good coverage. I could actually drag with 10, to be honest. I take that back. I was never, I was never good at math. So I guess actually 10 rods if you take what I got here and add more to it. So anyway, so I'm back. Where was I? Oh, hopefully Lyle told everybody everything that's going on. For you guys that just tuned in, I'm on Lake Wiley, uh, dragging for catfish. This today is the first day, and it's what August 28th. I got a slight hint of fall. Yeah, I walked outside this morning. It was just a hint of fall, just a hint. Wasn't cold, it was a little bit overcast, a little, little just a little cool, just a hint of fall. Hint. Water temperatures have dropped a little bit. We're down to around 84, 85 degrees. Our water temperatures, you know, were peaking in the summer, 90, 91. So it's a hint, it's not here. Now it gets cloudy today. 
just a little hint. It's not far away, guys. We're, uh, if these water temperatures will continue to drop a little bit, another five degrees, it's going to be really into Flathead City, Flathead Bike going on. So we'll see. It's coming. Uh, if you missed uh, my live feed yesterday from Lake Water Ready, you didn't miss much. It was a mess. It was a mess. You got to see this the whole time. See that? See how crooked that is? You got to look at that. I couldn't see it, but anyway, that was the first one. I deleted it. Then the second one, it was all kinds of stuff. It died. I, we weren't any fish biting about like today, and the one time I hook up on a decent fish, the, the phone dies. But anyway, what I talked about yesterday was I'm going to try to do a few shows leading up to the Cabela's King Cat Classic, which is on Lake Watery in South Carolina. So I'm going to try to do a few shoots from down there, a few live feeds, and uh, kind of just let the anglers know what's going on for the tournament. So what's going to be going on with the fishing. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Keep uh, your eyes peeled. It will uh, hopefully help any new people coming in. And most of the local guys don't listen to what I say anyway. But uh, some of the new people coming in at least give you a ballpark on where to start and where to figure out where you want to fish and how you want to fish. My prediction, 20. right now I'm going to go early and I'm going to say 20 pound average wins it. That's 10 fish, so it's going to be a little 200, a little over. It's going to be between 20 and 21 pounds. That's my early prediction on what wins it. So, uh, there was a question here. How are you setting the depth on your planer boards? Ron, uh, I say Ron, R. Johnson asked, how are you setting the depth on the planer boards? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm cast, I'm using Santee rigs. I am using these boards to do nothing but drag the bottom. And that's the reason I went to these boards. And forgive me if you can't hear me. Hopefully you can hear me with all this wind. That is the reason I went with these boards, uh, because I needed something that would pull that ounce and a half, two ounce drifting weight that I've got on there. And I'm just dragging the bottom. All I'm doing is using those to increase the coverage area that I've got here. I've probably got, probably I don't have them out far now, 50 feet covered. So that's all I'm using them for. Um, I have used them suspended. I was trying that in the summer uh, when we had the thermocline stuff going on, and I was basically just dropping it straight down underneath the boat or doing the eyelet pull two feet for every eyelet, uh, or two feet to the first eyelet, measuring it that way, clipping them on. These have a heavy clip on them uh, that makes it pretty tough to come loose. They stay, that's why another good thing that these are good for dragging is that when you start to get hung up, they don't pop loose like a conventional planer board does. I have some of the lighter weight water bugs ones and you know that's kind of a live bait kind of board and the clip will release right away as soon as you get a strike on it. So uh, so yeah, I'm just dragging the bottom with them and what I'm doing. And there's ways, uh, depending on what kind of clips you got, that you can put a slip knot on there like you do with a slip bobber. You put a slip knot on there with a bead that way when it it won't slide up past that in the clip and stuff. Uh, I don't have any videos on doing that because I seldom ever do it. So hopefully that answered your question on that. Uh, I said I'm just dragging the bottom. So uh, first time watching live fishing, already addicted. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, buddy. That's awesome, dude. Uh, that's awesome. Like I said, I feel like it's the same people watching over and over, but then I get messages from people all the time. They're like, dude, that's first time I've ever tuned in, first time I've seen your channel, and that's cool. Thanks, Matt, for joining in and. Uh, it's kind of stupid sometimes, to be perfectly honest. Uh, it's uh, like doing radio fishing almost. You, if there's not a fish being caught or reeled in or netted, I have to sit here and talk about something. Otherwise, it's boring. Or I should say more boring than it already is when you're not catching fish. But hey, listen, this is fishing. Any of you guys that fish know you don't catch fish continuously, at least not often. It's just the nature of the beast. I wish... I wish you could catch them and reel them in, but I'm going to be honest with you. This is just my view on fishing videos. Some of the most boring part of a fishing video is somebody casting and reeling in. The ones that I've seen, I've seen some of the bass fishing ones that I've tuned into the live. That's where I got the idea originally for the live stuff, was watching the bass guys, and they basically put a phone down, and it looks up at them, and they're... It's that for hours and hours, and... I guess if you're into that, that's cool, but uh, 
I think there's got to be a little more value uh, for you guys to take your time to listen to me jack my jaw. So I try to pass along a little bit of fishing knowledge and answer some questions in the meantime. And I understand a bass kayak fishing a tournament can't do that. So that's what's different about this and what makes this uh, more interesting and can be fun. And, uh, you know, it's uh, that's the value that you're getting from watching here is that you can actually pick up some knowledge in between catching fish, which has been a while. So uh, I was not expecting much today. By the way, for those of you who know, I need a sponsor for the fish counter. That's going to be my next thing. Somebody, we need the something, somebody's fish counter. It's officially at four. Not good. Yesterday, smoked them. 20 fish yesterday on Lake Waterie. Uh, it was a pretty good bite. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. And uh, mostly small fish. Uh, had an 18 and a 14 as the bigger two. Mostly eater size box, box fish, as I call them. I call them box fish because they go in the fish box if you're keeping them. And uh, it's a good bite. It's a real good bite. Uh, the fish were in the mouths of the creeks. Uh, I started to try fishing that same pattern here, but... The two creeks that I went to had brown water, and uh, if you uh, haven't watched the beginning of this video, know what brown water is. I'll uh, it's it's not Kentucky bourbon, it is not Tennessee whiskey, and it is not the poop pipe from the water treatment plant. It is some water that happens this time of the year from the we'll call it the turnover, even though it's not really a turnover. It's some of the decaying biomass stuff from the bottom of the lake that starts the spread out and all that kind of crap so anyway that's starting to happen it doesn't it's not lake wide it's it's usually in pockets and there's some areas here on lake wiley to where oh we got a bite we're getting a bunch of little bites i'll tell you nothing passes the time like a ice cold sun drop when you're out trying to catch a catfish ah. citrusy refreshing Heck, it almost matches my shirt. I was waiting for that rod to fold over and we're going to go to it, but that may not be happening. Let me check it, though. It's kind of slack. Wind's dying, too. We had pretty good wind today. It's around 10 to 12 sustain, and we had some 15, 18 gusts using the big drift sock. And uh, it's... Uh, it's dropping down, which I'm really barely moving now, which that's fine. That's my thing on drifting and dragging baits. You can always go too fast, but you can never go too slow. So there you go. See if there's any other questions got thrown here. Uh, are those Zach Royce planter boards? No, these are Dieter Melhorn fishing planter boards. Similar, but they got my name on them. Not sugar-coated. We all have those struggles. Yes, we do. There are all kinds of struggles out here. Let's see what I was saying. Uh, Mark says, those are good-looking rods in the daytime. Shame you can't see them at night. He is talking about my Big Cat Fever rods, and I constantly berate Big Cat Fever for not having a white catfish rod. Bass rod, I can understand. Bass fishermen fish it during the day, mostly. If you're going to make a catfish rod, you got to make one white. So, if they're listening, they're listening. Nobody listens to me, especially the big-time rod manufacturers. Make a white fishing rod, okay? Make a white rod. I know they've got white paint at the factory because the tips on those things are white. So, so the tips are white. They got enough paint to come on down. Uh, oh, somebody asked that I get on the prize wheel for Catfish Weekly this week. All right, E Star 75, bring everybody up to date on how to get in the list for the prize wheel because I have been watching Catfish Weekly here on YouTube, which comes on tonight at 8 o'clock, so everybody make sure you tune in, and I'll be over in the side chat mouthing it up with everybody. Um, you have to get somehow into the some list to get drawn, and they got a prize wheel that they spin, and they give away all kinds of cool stuff. One of the things that they give away here, it's right here, rig wrap. they got some rig wrap, rig wrap stuff, which is some very cool little boxes, which I'll show you some in a minute. They sent me some. For drift rigs, because I was complaining that these were too small, and I've got some now that are pretty dang cold. They're big enough for the drift rig. But they've got all kinds of stuff on there that they give away. So somebody tell everybody how to get, because you have to, like, I don't know, you go somewhere. I think it's on Facebook and kind of registered or something. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hook them in the mouth is on here. I am not worthy. Hook them in the mouth is on here. Dude, what's up? All right, y'all, if you're watching the tape of this, you won't know who I'm in. Hook them in the mouth 
down in Jacksonville, Florida. You gotta go check out his YouTube channel. Awesome stuff. He's got the he, he puts the, he does the best job with music. I wish I could do what he does with music in his videos. He cuts some great beats in there. It's some good stuff. He's really funny, and it's our running joke at the house: hook them in the mouth because you don't just catch them, you hook them in the mouth. So anyway, check him out. Y'all got to check him. Hook him in the mouth. Kayak fishing. Uh, great, great channel. Puts out some great stuff. He gets out there in like kayaks and stuff. And he gets out there and he, he had this little floating tube boat thing that he went out in one time. And it's just cool stuff. Real cool guy. I love his stuff. At some point, I'm going to get up and fish with him. Uh, I'm going to make a turn into Jacksonville at some point because I want to do a hook him in the mouth collab with him. That would be really be cool. Between him and me together, it will be the most hilarious, stupid, crazy thing you've ever seen. So, anyway... Glad you tuned in, man. That is awesome. Y'all check him out. Hook him in the mouth. Kayak fishing. Great show. I got all kinds of cool. I'm really honored. I get people like him coming in here. I get, who else did I get coming in here? Uh, I got Luke coming in here. Chris Flores jumps in here now and then. So that's cool, man. That's cool. I like having, oh God, I got a line going off 90 degrees to the boat. Most likely a fish. It's going to be a mess. What the heck we got here? Man in the bow. Just to bring you up to speed on what happened. That line was going that way. I looked up. It popped off. That damn it. The line was going that way, and I just felt it pop off. It's one of them days. I didn't hook him in the mouth. That's the problem. I think I hooked him in the eyeball. If I'd have hooked him in the mouth, I'd have caught him. Look at that. Oh, there's the ultimate insult right there, boys. If y'all have ever fished for a catfish, and you didn't catch him, you didn't hook him in the mouth, what does he do? He leaves you some slime. That's dirty pool right there, bud. That is a dirty pool. Dang. All right, bear with me. I'm going to rebate here. That was the curse of the hook him in the mouth kayak fishing right there. I didn't get to hook him in the mouth. Dang, I thought we had one. I'm back. Get back over on this side of the camera. All right, I'm really impressed. I've still got 34 people watching after that melee. Uh, yeah, that uh, that did not work out. I'm sorry about that. Look at that slime. Yeah, slime. Mm. Uh, not gonna do it. Sorry. Sorry. Even I have my limits of stupidity. Okay. Oh, uh, if you didn't, uh, what was I gonna tell you? I was gonna tell you something. I forgot. Anyway. I'm back. Uh, one hour. I got to get out of here soon because I got to get back to the boat ramp. Got to get home to watch Catfish Weekly tonight here on YouTube. It's coming on in. Hopefully, Lyle's explained everything. I haven't been paying attention with all these fish I've been catching. I haven't been able to pay attention to the feed real well. Has told everybody how to get into the drawing for stuff because there's all kinds of cool stuff. Hey, hang on a second. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Don't move. Don't move. I'll show you something. Don't move. I'm still here. All right. So one of the things you can win is rig wrap stuff, which is really cool. I was, I've gotten some of these. I found them at a Walmart. They're cool. You can put little pre-tied rigs in there. I'm going to do a video on how to use these things because the biggest problem 
uh, is learn how to use these. And problem was getting my drift rigs into there. So look what they sent me. I'm gonna, I'll end up dumping it out when I open it, but it's a big one and it's pink. Pink and sexy, just like me. That didn't make any sense, did it? Yeah, well, just ignore that part. We'll edit. Oh, it's live, we can't edit it. Anyway, that's what it looks like on the inside. A ready to go drift rig, everything ready to go. All I gotta do is pull it out of there, tie off onto it, and I'm ready to pull it out, pull it back in there. Holler at your boy, hook him in the mouth. Love it, buddy, love it. <laughs> Y'all check out hook him in the mouth, good channel. And here's another one, a multi one. A multi rig one, same thing, about the same size, a little bit, pretty big. Hook them in the mouth for some of your saltwater stuff, though. You might want to get some of these, lay your hands on some of these things. They're really cool, I like them. It's a great way, especially fishing with like the Santee rigs, it's a great way to do it. And I'm sure it'll work with like three way rigs and that kind of stuff. So, anyway, I like their stuff. It's rare that I come across something I actually like because uh, I'm usually pretty critical about crap. So, anyway. Yeehaw, where were we? Oh, not catching fish. That's what we were doing. Now, it's, uh, from what I've gotten right now, you've heard me say before, time of day bite. Uh, from some of my buddies that are guides out here and some other buddies that are fishing, I'm hearing a lot of that. Uh, I'm hearing, uh, I had a buddy that's a guide here. We swap information all the time. And let me get it right here. He said, uh, he was out here, uh, I think it was Saturday, had a guide party. It was out that morning. Boom, boom, boom. First two hours, they killed him. He thought it was going to be one of the best days of the year. And then, boom, it shut down. So, heard that from another guy that was doing some flathead fishing. And, uh, yeah, so it's been kind of, uh, it's kind of, yeah, there's these little windows. And I call it a time of day bite. you got to be there in that little two-hour window. Some days you catch them all day. I don't know what the magic is behind that. I can't predict it. I've tried tracking barometric pressure, wind, humidity, uh, what's coming on TV on Friday night and I can't find a pattern to figure out when I just know what happens sometimes. And usually what can happen is you come out an hour later the next day and you'll catch them again. And then an hour later after that, usually it's about an hour later is when it starts and that probably has to do with the lunar phase and all that with the moon. So anyway, that's kind of where it's at. There's one over here bopping on the rod. I don't even want to go to it. I ain't even going to go to it. I don't know if, if I've hooked him in the mouth or not. That's got, uh, it's a major concern. He may be hooked in the eyeball and his eyeball will come out. Which that has happened before. I actually had an eyeball of a fish one time. Yeah, that's not for family tea. That's not something you want the little six-year-old girl to see and that's wanting to go fishing one day. Uh, yeah, yeah, fish eyeball. I don't know. Is he hooked in the mouth? Is he? I cannot tell. That rod's not moving now. I bet I didn't. This is one of them bites, man, where it's just a real slow, just very lethargic. I have, I was thinking earlier, I haven't seen a rod uh, fold over, like hammered, fold, folded over since I caught that 50 pounder on July 4th. Uh, that video's up and online. I think I've got it up and posted. But I caught a 50 pounder July 4th, like at 11.45. It was middle of the day, middle of the boat traffic middle of the craziness and I caught a 50 pound blue out here and that was the last time I think I seen a rod just get slammed over on a monster fish. Uh, it's been just kind of a real odd bite. So it is what it is, man. That's what makes fishing great. That's what I tell people. I don't want to come out here and catch them every time. Uh, that would take all the fun out of it. Uh, the, this is why I fish year round. Uh, I'm out here all the time. I'll be out here in the winter. Uh, that's why you put enough time in the water, you'll catch fish. So uh, that's why, you know, I fish hard and fish all the time, fish when I can, even when it's not good fishing, because it'll come to a streak and it'll come around where you get on fish. Well, even like yesterday at Watery, I was on fish, man. I was good fishing. If I was a fishing guide, I would have been king of the world yesterday, catching that many fish and catching a couple on the team. So you, uh, you take the good with the bad. There's ups and downs, and that's just the way it goes out here. So anyway. Cool, cool. But yeah, make sure you guys tune in tonight. Uh, Catfish Weekly. Uh, hopefully Lyle told you everything that was going on. He's probably getting ready for the show right now and probably already jumped off of here. But uh, hopefully he'll let you know what's going on and figure out how to get on the prize wheel because I still don't know how to get on the prize wheel. So I won't get to win anything. So I'm kind of heartbroken. Muddy River Catfish. And there's another one. Everybody, oh, everybody is showing up today. What's up, Chris Flores? How you doing, pal? 
I was just reading some stuff. Chris Flores just came into the feed, folks. He is from New Mexico, Muddy River, catfishing. Uh, great channel. I mean, he's a great channel, great family guy. He fishes in little ditches that are as wide as my boat. I always give him a hard time about that. Great guy. Got a great channel. He's uh, He loses more subscribers in a day than I have. I mean, he's got that many people watching everything he does, so. <laughs> and it's because he's good. So if I was good, I'd have that many subscribers. So that should tell me something right there. But yeah, thanks for joining in, Chris. I appreciate it, buddy. Y'all check his channel out if you haven't. I'm, heck, everybody on YouTube's already subscribed to him, so y'all probably already know about him. So anyway, uh, thought I had a bite. I don't know how to act if I catch a fish. So anyway, it's... uh. It's slow fishing. It's it's slow. We're you saw how many I've missed on this drag, and I'm still at four. So it's not good. Uh, it is what it is. I had a couple hours to come out today. I wanted to get out just to see what's going on in this lake. Plus, I had a bunch of shad left over from yesterday, uh, and uh, I have this thing. It's like an OCD thing that I almost need medication for. If I go fishing, like yesterday, I. I went out and threw the net a few times and caught a bunch of shad. Had like three dozen gizzards yet. I didn't use them all yesterday. So what happens is they're sitting in my cooler and I have those shad on the boat in the cooler, okay? I had a lot of stuff I needed to do today. I needed to take the blades off my lawnmower and sharpen them. I've got a, a pool pump that is bad. The switch is bad on it. But I knew that bait was in the cooler. And I knew I needed to use that bait before it went bad. But you can only ice it for so long. Guess your shad get mushy. I'll know that. So I, I was, I had all, I did everything that I could possibly do today so I could get it off my list. But I left a lot of cards on the table. And I should have been at home taking care of stuff, but I had that bait. And that's that, that's that addiction part of it that's like, I had that bait. I had to go use that bait and go fishing, and that's why I'm out here. So, that's a mental problem, people. That's a mental problem. When you got that bait in the cooler, and you know it's going to go bad. It's one thing to have it in a live well, because it'll live, you know, it'll live for days, weeks. But when you got some on ice, you're like, man, too late to freeze it. Got to use it. Or I'm going to throw away good bait, and there's nothing worse. I'm telling you right now. When anybody here is, when you throw away good bait, you got about two dozen gizzard shad in there, about that long, and you throw them away. Every bit of you that was a man just goes right out in the woods with that bait that you just threw away. It's like pouring out cold beer. Okay, there's laws against it in a lot of states. A lot of states. I think that Chris is it's illegal to do that in New Mexico. You can't do it. So anyway, I'm losing my mind, I'm losing my mind. Waiting for a fish, it's not happening, folks. It's not happening, the magic's not happening. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reel everything in and I'm gonna take it to the hizzy. I'm gonna go watch the show tonight. First, I'm gonna thank all y'all for tuning in and watching this. I was a good crowd of people. Any of the new people that came in, I really appreciate you coming in. Sometimes we catch more fish than this. Uh, Sometimes we don't. I've done these shows for a long time and caught one or two fish. So it happens. It's just the nature of the beast, especially this time of the year. If you keep watching, see a bunch of y'all people live up north. And come about December, January, y'all going to be ice skating where you're fishing right now. And you're going to be watching me. Okay, you're going to be watching Chris Flores at Muddy River Catfishing. You're going to be watching Hook'em in the Mouth down there in Jacksonville on his kayak. It'll probably be 80 degrees, and I'll really be pissed at him because he'll be out fishing uh, in 80 degrees in shorts. But even I get mad at him for doing that. But anyway, uh, it will get good again. The fishing will get good, and we'll catch some fish. But I, I do, seriously, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. It's, uh, it's really cool that this many people actually jump on here and watch. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do when it starts getting cold. And... Uh, you know, wintertime, everybody likes to watch this stuff from what I've heard from the feedback. Five, six, seven o'clock in the afternoon, evening when they come in and eat dinner, you know, fiddling around, whatever. Beating their kids, making them do homework so they can go watch YouTube. You know, the parents can go watch me fishing on YouTube. So, uh, I don't know what we're going to do in wintertime. We're going to come up with something. We'll probably be more fishing during the day, so we'll figure that out when it happens. But, yeah, thanks for watching. 
if you haven't subscribed, subscribed, hit subscribe on there. I appreciate it. Throw a thumbs up. Thanks. Leave any of your comments, questions. I didn't get to see all the questions and stuff in here. This thing will get posted back up. And you can come on and throw in any of comments or questions you have. I love answering questions. I'm trying to stay at 100% on answering stuff. And uh, all of my social media stuff is on Dieter Melhorn Fishing. Dot com. I've got a website now that's kind of like can be the hub. It can be the hub and you get all these little fingers going out in social media or heaven and they're just all over the place. Just It's like that. It's just Dieter Melhorn fishing everywhere. Actually, I think I'm only on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. That's about it. I've tried the Snapchat. Does anybody do Snapchat? Before I leave here, I just can't quit yakking. Does anybody do Snapchat? Throw out a thumbs up. I know there's a delay here. Does anybody do Snapchat? If you don't do Snapchat, throw a thumbs down. I just want to see something. Um, I've got Snapchat. I don't get it. Uh, I think I'm. I think that may be the one social media world that's just I'm too old for. Uh, I don't get it. I don't know how to really make it interesting, uh, especially to a bunch of people watching or tuning into it. So, uh, but yeah, throw up a thumbs up if you got it and enjoy it. And a thumbs down if you got it and don't really know what the crap it is until you get a Snapchat from your kid or something. And this is really annoying. I'm getting bit right here. Right here at the end. Right here I'm getting bit. Just one fish. One fish. But anyway, yeah, DieterMillhornFishing.com. That's the website. It's got links to all the social media stuff on there. Uh, like today... I went and notified everybody on Dieter Melhorn Fishing on Facebook that I was going to be coming on at 6.15. Luckily, it worked out great. I knew exactly what time I was going to come on, so I tried to use it for that. Instagram, I try to keep some pictures up, stuff like that. I'll put up a video and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, it's just kind of get information out. And, and then I've got links to other stuff on there. People ask about rods, reels, and all that kind of stuff. I've got links on there the different stuff I fish with, where you can buy and all that kind of stuff. And uh, even where you can buy these shirts, the catfish shirts, is right there on the front page. So anyway, yeah, check that out. I appreciate it. I'm going to jump off for now uh, and get home, take a shower, get the boat put up. And I'm only throwing out three, one, two, three, three pieces of shad. So I'm okay. I get to keep my man card. That's not too much bait to throw away. But um, I'll be seeing you on Catfish Weekly. I'm going to be tuning in and watching the kitchen and sidebar. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. You're awesome. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk at you soon.